back to my channel. My name is Alyssa and you're watching Wonderful Acts. On this channel, I talk about the wonderful acts of God. And today, I'm sharing with you guys my birth story. Y'all, <laughs> this story was so crazy. It was wild. I honestly was in utter disbelief at what God did to help me birth this third child. So we're gonna jump into that. Before we do, I wanna shout out all my new subscribers. Hey y'all, hey Wonder Fam. So many of you have been blessed by my um, video that I did about how the guy was not my husband. I mean, it literally has over 30,000 views right now, which is mind blowing. So if you're a new subscriber and that video brought you here, make sure you comment below, tell us where you're from. People in the Wonder Fam, go show them some love. But yeah, I just wanna say thank you guys for following me and joining me on this journey also stay tuned to the end of this video every one of you guys so you can meet baby miles that's my son's name his name is miles joseph um, i'm gonna try to bring him out right now he's napping um but once he wakes up i'm gonna bring him out and introduce him to you guys okay are y'all ready y'all is not ready for this birth story if you've been following me for a long time you know i've had, i've had two supernatural childbirths like my firstborn was a crazy testimony my second born was a crazy testimony and so i mean i was believing god for some things but again I did not think it was gonna happen the way that it happens the main thing that I was praying for for this baby was it to be a quick labor I literally was like Lord let it be fast let it be pain-free but really the biggest thing was like I just wanted it to be like fast it was my biggest prayer so this baby um, he's not in me anymore I'm so used to him in my stomach but miles he went past his due date now my first two also went past their due date my firstborn was 41 weeks and three days uh, my second born was 41 weeks and six days. So 11 days passed and 13 days passed their due date. So I just tend to carry my children longer. Miles also went past his due date. And, um, you know, I, I kind of get annoyed if I'm being honest with all the questions, the comments that people give you when you go past your due date. If you've been past your due date, you understand and you know it gets kind of annoying at the end. And so I was kind of over it. And again, I always start thinking like, What's wrong with me? Is there something wrong with me? Why can't I be normal? Like everyone else is carrying my baby this amount of time, woo woo But then on the flip side of it, I'm like, you know what, no. It's a blessing to be pregnant. It's a blessing to carry children. Like my mom texted me and was like, you know, um, you'll never forget the wonderful feeling of having a child like in your womb. like here. And I'm just like, yo, like some people, you know, are, are desperate, would love to be able to be pregnant. So why am I trying to like rush the process? Let me just enjoy the little kicks, the little feels, even enjoying the discomfort. Because if you've been pregnant, you know, it's not always comfortable, but even just, um, again, enjoying that gift and just embracing um, the season of pregnancy. So I'm trying to like get my mind right about about it and not stress out but I'm just telling y'all it's really a challenge for me at the end and so the day before Miles entered the world I remember I went to this ministry meeting and I was feeling contraction so leading up I would say maybe like a week a week and a half before Miles was born my body my uterus was contracting I was having the Braxton Hicks I was feeling movement I was feeling like mild cramping kind of like what it feels like when you're about to start your cycle and um, so I felt like that was good. I'm like, okay, my body is getting ready. Like I feel my body getting ready. Um, you know, it, it's doing all the prep work now. So I know he's coming, he's coming soon. I just don't know when. And that's a whole nother word. Like the Lord shows me so much through childbirth y'all, but just the process of waiting on God, like the process on waiting on a baby, like it's literally completely outside of your control. Nobody knows, <laughs> nobody knows the day that your baby's gonna be born. Sorry y'all, I got like this cough. I've been going through some stuff over here, so excuse me and my voice, this is not my normal voice, but this is what's going on right now. But nobody knows when the baby's gonna be born except for God. It's literally a mystery to science about how a baby knows and how a woman knows and your body knows that it's time for the baby to be born. And, um, and so unless you get an induction, which don't always work 100% of the time, or you schedule a C-section, but if you just go the plain old, you know, leave it up to Jesus route, like it's a complete mystery and so I think it really is um, a power struggle almost because your ego and your pride you know we want to control things and it really is completely out of your control and you just have to surrender and trust God so that's a whole word for somebody to surrender and trust God the day before miles was born and actually almost every day leading up to that day I would go for walks around the neighborhood at night to try to naturally induce labor again I was trying all the natural induction methods none of them was working okay none of them I've done everything y'all none of them was working <laughs> and so that night I actually had went to like a ministry meeting that I was a part of again I'm feeling these Braxton Hicks contractions I'm feeling like the mild cramping I'm feeling my body like warming up and getting ready 
And then that night I was tired. Like I really just wanted to go to sleep, but I'm like, ugh, I need to walk. But I feel like I was just over at this point. And I was like, you know what? I need to stop trying to like make this baby come. Like the baby is going to come when it is his time to come and God knows it's his time to come. And Alyssa, you've already been through this. Like again, with your two other kids, it was both past their due date. Baby is gonna come when the Lord says and when it's time, so just rest. And so I did decide to do just one walk and I asked my husband to walk with me, which, which he graciously did. So we went for a walk around the neighborhood and again, normally I would do like two laps or I would do three laps or I would try to push myself. But I really feel like God was like, no, just like chill, just rest. So. I ended up coming in the house um, and resting and going to bed. The next morning, okay, this is Friday morning, I normally wake up a little bit before seven o'clock, that's when my kids wake up. And so I went to bed, I rested, and then I was laying in the bed in the morning and I was feeling some, some cramping, some contractions, but again, I had been feeling this, so it wasn't anything new to me, as if they were Braxton Hicks. I'm laying in the bed, I feel one, lay 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 then i roll over you know and i feel another one then my daughter comes in the room to wake me up and again like 6 45 a.m <laughs> and so by seven o'clock i get up and get out the bed i start getting dressed i'm getting ready to take her to school but as i'm getting dressed i feel a contraction and i would if i was y'all was standing up and i would have to like grip something and be like "Ooh, hold up kind of felt that one <laughs> you know and i took a shower i was in the shower and i was just really feeling these contractions and they were they were pretty far apart but they were it they were strong oh if i had to get my tea y'all because i don't know what's going on so i'm having these contractions and uh and it's like eight in the morning so i text my husband like i might be in labor and i call him and i was like hey so i don't know for sure but i think i might be in labor so like let me like time time them, you know, download the app and time the contractions to see how far apart they are. And then I'll let you know if you need to come home or not. And I get off the phone with him, I start, I download the app, I time the contraction, and the app that I downloaded, it like tells you like when you need to go to the hospital. And so I, I do it for like five, 10 minutes. And they were about three to four minutes apart. They were about 45 seconds to a minute long. And then the app, something just pops up and is like, go to the hospital. <laughs> even though we use the birth center but basically saying like no you're really in labor you need to go somewhere um and so i call him back like yeah i think you should come home and at this point again i can't even finish getting myself dressed like i'm literally like sitting on my exercise ball like butt naked <laughs> and my daughter my eldest is like four so she's able to like get herself dressed and she she saw i was in labor and she was like oh no i need to go pack my bag but i could not get myself dressed because i'm really feeling these things my husband gets home uh, maybe like at like 8 15 or so then he finishes getting the girls ready we pack our bags we don't be back in my bags like last minute we pack my bag we get all our stuff he helps me to get dressed because again i'm like feeling these things and i'm like i can't even get dressed so he helps me get dressed we get to the car we get outside at 9 a.m i text my my friend who was gonna watch my kids while we went to the birth center like we're on the way so at 9 a.m i'm standing outside you know bracing for these contractions my neighbor's seeing me i'm like hey girl i think i might be in labor <laughs> and uh we get in the car we load up the minivan and we drive to my friend's house we get to my friend's house about 9 20 a.m and side note I really wanted to do a home birth, you guys. I definitely feel like I could have done a home birth because I do not think it makes any sense for a woman to be in the car having contractions, okay? It doesn't make sense. We need to just rewrite all the rules because it makes zero sense. <laughs> so that's a whole other side note. But my friend comes out, she gets the kids. Again, we're there like 9.20 and she's asking me how's it going. And the thing again that was different about this labor than my other labors was the contractions were further apart in time but they were more intense. Like with Dawn, with my second born, when I started having contractions with her, they were literally like two minutes apart, um, but they weren't as intense. This go round, they're like four minutes apart. Sometimes it felt like even longer than that, maybe like five minutes, I don't know, but I just, I had a lot of space. So it's like when I wasn't having a contraction, it was like, oh, I'm normal, I'm fine. And I would be concerned like, wait, am I really in labor? Because I thought maybe they had stopped because there was so much time and space. But the difference was when I did have a contraction, they were powerful <laughs> and I was like, okay. So I was kind of like, what is going on? It felt like baby could come at any minute. I was really concerned we weren't even gonna make to the birth center. So drop the kids off at 9.20, we get to the birth center at like 9.40 is when they clock me as, as like walking in the door. 
and uh, we get in. I sit on the toilet for a minute, which if you watch my other two videos, something I always do, it just feels good to sit on a toilet and just relieve that pressure kind of like on your, your bottom. And I was already feeling pressure on my bottom, which normally when you feel that, that means like you can start pushing. So she was like, do you, my midwife was like, you know, do you feel pressure? And I'm like, yes, I feel pressure. So then I get on the bed for a second and get on all fours because again, I love the all fours position because I feel like it helps baby just get in the right position. So I'm like leaning on a birth ball on all fours on the bed while she's running my bath water. Bath water fills up, they get us to the right temperature, I get in the bath immediately and it just feels so good. Uh, if you've ever had a water birth or just like have done that or you're thinking about it, definitely do it because just the warm water just feels like so good. It just relieves, <laughs> it just relieves the pain in a lot of ways or the pressure or whatever, it just feels great. And if you're wondering why, it's just like, you know, when you're cramping and you're on your period, you put a heating pad on or whatever, it just feels good. So I'm in the bathtub. And um, again, there was so much time in between contractions, I really didn't know what to do. And with my last two, uh, if you've watched those videos, the Lord told me kind of like, you need to labor, like you need to participate, like labor is active, like be involved. So I'm thinking to myself, like, do I need to be like doing something? And my husband's like massaging my back and like rubbing the back of my head and it felt so good in the water. And I'm asking the midwife, like, do I need to be like doing anything? Cause I'm like laying back. I tried to like flip over, but it was so uncomfortable that I flipped back over. And she was like, no, you know, just sit, you know, just, just take a bath. <laughs> and my husband was like, yeah, no, just take a bath. And I felt like God, literally y'all, it felt like the Holy Spirit. And this is the part where I'm gonna focus in. It felt like God literally was like sitting right behind me. I promise he's so present in, in labor. For me at least like it's, it's like he's right here in, in my in my ear and he was just like this when, I'm, when i was asking you know like lord should i be doing something should i be like what should i be doing i felt like god was like this is going to be a different this is going to be different it's not going to be like your last two like i just want you to rest and i was like okay <laughs> you know and um, and i and we we pray and we worship kind of through the whole experience i'm playing worship music and uh, i'm just laying in the bathtub relaxing having these contractions and um <laughs> my midwife was like you know do you feel that pressure and i'm like yeah I'm like should i start pushing she's like you'll know you you know you'll know when it's time to push you know so i felt like i was like all right like let's start pushing so then i started like trying to push when i felt the pressure and like push into the contractions and i maybe was doing that for like three four like maybe five minutes like i feel like it wasn't that long that i was doing that and then um, i felt like god was like okay like this next one like it's gonna be it and I just promise, I, I said this if you want to share the story, I'm like, I don't even know if I really like believed God when he said that, but I was just like, okay. So the next one came and I pushed and it was like a longer contraction. So it's like, I kind of like pushed longer. And then all of a sudden I just felt him like drop and move and like down there and he started crowning. And I was like, oh, like he's coming. And then my water actually broke when his head crowned. Like my water hadn't broken up until that point, which was another reason why I thought for a second, like, oh snaps, like this might take longer <laughs> than my other two did because I, my water still hasn't broke. But when he um, came down the birth canal and his head crowned, my midwife was like, oh, your water broke. And so anyways, his head's there and I'm like, ah, and, and then I push, she's like, you know, and I'm, I'm still pushing. So I feel his head come out feel like his shoulders come out, but then he kind of like gets stuck around the middle. And then they left like, okay, you're gonna have to push again. And I'm literally like, I can't do it. <laughs> Cause I tell you guys, like both of my other babies, all three of my labors, you hit a point y'all, you're gonna hit a point, at least I've hit a point where it's like, I can't do it. And then she was like, yes, you can. And my husband's like, yes, you can. And I'm like, God, I can't do it. And Jesus was like, I'm gonna do it for you. Like, I just feel like God was so present, y'all. He was just like, I'm gonna do it. Like, don't worry. I'm like, and I'm literally like, Lord, help. I'm literally praying, y'all. Jesus, help me, Lord, help me. And she's like, okay, you need to push again. Like, you know, next contraction, you have to push. And then so then all of a sudden she's like, you gotta push. So then I start pushing and I let out like a roar. <laughs> Like it wasn't even a scream. It was an actual like raw. <laughs> like it was the loudest scream I've ever screamed in my entire life. It was like I, I had to use my whole existence, like my whole being to push him out into the world. And by the grace of God, literally by the grace of God, I pushed him out. And he entered the world at 10.21 a.m. on March 25th, uh, he weighed eight pounds, 10 ounces and was 21 inches long and again his name is miles joseph and so we literally were at the birth center we got there at 9 40 
a.m. and he was born at 10 21 a.m. Praise the Lord, like less than an hour's time. My total labor, you guys, was three and a half hours. Three and a half hours long, glory to God, which was the answered prayer was for a quick labor because I'd say I started having contractions around like 6.45 a.m. ish, 7 a.m. Again, I was asleep. So it was like maybe I was having them throughout the night and I just didn't know when I was resting. Come on, somebody. But it was literally like God did the work for me. He like prepped it. He just did it in advance. And I don't know. All I know is glory be to God because I, I just couldn't do it, you guys. Like God had to literally do it for me and I'm so blessed and I'm so grateful. I had no ripping and tearing. This is glory to God. No tearing with none of my kids by the grace of God. Um, and I also think that has to do with, again, just waiting for your body to be ready um, and let your body, and just you you knowing your body and moving with your body um, and trusting God instead of trying to force the baby to come before the baby's ready to come into the world. So yeah it was definitely an adrenaline rush um but it was such a high and i'm literally i remember driving home like we left the birth the my birth center only keeps you for like four hours and then you get to go home so we literally went to chipotle <laughs> and we're headed home and i remember being like you know I'll go, you're high on like endorphins and the natural hormones after you have a baby and um i just was telling my husband like i just wish everybody could have a baby i just wish everybody could experience childbirth because it's so powerful and it's so supernatural and it's amazing like what our bodies are able to do and, and what god is able to do and birthing a whole human into the world and and he was 10 days past his due date um but in god's perfect timing and i just think i just ovulate a little bit longer than everybody else <laughs> you know what I'm saying? i just carry longer i just date longer and that's perfectly fine um my next baby you all will not even know when the due date is i'll say it's two weeks past the actual due date if we have another one lord willing but yeah so that's my testimony glory to god about how i had another supernatural childbirth okay so here's baby miles he's like knocked out you guys he looks just like daddy <laughs> he's so cute um he's my little bundle of joy and um yeah he's super healthy super strong he's nursing really well i do breastfeed i do nurse nurse all my babies um my recovery is going really good and uh so yeah so just keep me in your prayers you guys keep me and my family in your prayers please 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 um again make sure you like this video give it a big thumbs up subscribe to the channel share it with a friend who is pregnant who's about to go through childbirth um go back and watch my other two testimonies about again the crazy ways that god helped me birth those other beautiful babies um and yeah i just love y'all so much thanks for being a part of my journey and one last thing that i really feel led to share um i wore these earrings that kind of have a rainbow in them um, and you know, a rainbow represents the faithfulness of God, the covenant that he made with Noah, that he would never flood the earth again. And some of you all watching this know that after my firstborn, um, I actually had a miscarriage. And when I got pregnant with my next child, Dawn, the day that I found out that I was pregnant, um, I saw a double rainbow in the sky. And I really took that as God's promise to me, his covenant to me, that I would not have a miscarriage again. Um, and by the grace of God, I have not had one. I've had two more healthy babies by the grace of God. Um, but what I wanna share with you guys is not about me, it's about you, um, and it's about God. And I just wanna say that God is faithful. Um, and I don't know what you're experiencing. I don't know what you're going through or what you've been through. Childbirth, um, having children is such a sensitive topic to so many women. So many women struggle with infertility. So many women have hearts desiring to conceive. So many women have been through miscarriages. I mean, I have thousands of women who have commented um, on my video where I shared about how I got pregnant after miscarriage. You guys have shared your own personal stories, your own personal losses. Um, and so I just wanna encourage you that God is faithful. God is faithful to keep his word and to keep his promises. And so I just wanna encourage you to keep praying, keep trusting, keep believing, like keep crying, like keep 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 coming to the feet of Jesus um, with your cares, with your worries, with your desires. Delight yourself in the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart. Um, and just keep trusting God um as he writes your story whatever happens in the end it's all for his glory um, and we have to know that god is good 
um, and he's faithful to keep his promises. So I just really felt led to encourage um, somebody with that word. So if that was for you and you're encouraged by that, please put it in the comments. Again, I love you guys and I'll see y'all next video. Pray for me. Pray that your girl gets some sleep <laughs> with this newborn and a four-year-old and an 18 month old, y'all. Um, but again, God is faithful. Um, and I love him and I trust him with all of me. So thank you, Jesus, again for this wonderful Acts testimony. Love you guys. See you next video. Peace.